This is going to be a very, very interesting video for a lot of people, I think, because what I'm going to do, instead of teaching you or showing you what to do or you know X, Y, and Z like I normally do, I'm going to make a few videos, this one included, on how to apply this entire funnel to a particular business model. So this is going to be the first video that I'm doing this. So. I'm just going to figure it out and see how it goes, and then I'm going to build on this with several more videos in the future. So we have our funnel here, we have our paid ads, we have our content, our outreach, our partnerships, our lead magnets, our thank you pages, our cold emails, our partnerships, our products, affiliates, and other conversion mechanisms, our website, and our offer. So I'm going to make this video on how you would apply this to a Facebook ad agency that serves e-commerce brands. And I think it'll be very good, very fun. So let's go right into it. So right off the bat, I've made, or I've taken out kind of the different parts and put blank parts for, you know, what would be specific to this. There are gonna be things such as Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, and your website and a sales call, like those things are going to be the same for virtually any business. But all of the rest would probably be specific to a Facebook ad agency serving e-commerce brands. So I have it right here. And I think that I'm going to make this Facebook ad agency serve a specific brand or type of business or niche as opposed to just all. And I Thinking about this in real time, this is not a scripted video or anything, but we're going to put it between one and five million per year in revenue because that adds a lot of context. You'd make different lead magnets, you'd post different types of stuff, you'd have a different webinars, different products, different groups, different everything if this wasn't there. Right? But it is there because we need to make it a little bit more specific because that will make the video more valuable in my opinion. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing I would do is I would plan out my categories for my lead magnets. And I also kind of made the parts over here and made them a little bit bigger. And hopefully there'll be some room on it. We, we have to decide what the topics for our lead magnets are or what the big categories and what the big objections and parts of our service are. And this is the first step, in my opinion, and always will be, because things like our content plan, our conversion mechanisms, our email flows, like, are kind of dependent on this. So what I would do is I would brainstorm the biggest parts. So I'd put you know, static image ads, video, oops, let's kind of, there we go, we'll put that at 24 sizing instead just so it doesn't overflow we'd have video ads we would have scripting we would have hooks we would have media buying we would have landing pages because we need the landing page is very important for the, our email or for our ads to go to it's a very important part of the ad even though it's not in the ad itself I would do something like UGC or influencer marketing. UGC is user generated content. What are some other ones that I might try? I might do something like the scroll stopper, which is kind of like the thumbnail if you don't know what that is. Something there's a few parts in paid ads, you know, someone's scrolling their Instagram feed. We need to obviously hook their attention in the first second or two seconds or three seconds to get them to watch the ad, but we also need to make them stop. If they just scroll past the feed, past our video, we're not even gonna get a chance to show them the hook. And what would be the last one? I'm just thinking, because this is not a scripted video, and the purpose of this video is to show you that this is possible for any business and anything that you could possibly want to do. So scripting, I'd probably put something like production value because although you know that stuff like your lighting, your microphone, if you want to do that kind of stuff, and I'm gonna stop here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine different categories, and that's gonna be good enough for the different lead magnets, in my opinion. 
So what I'm going to do here is, those are the categories, but those aren't actually the lead magnets. So what can we do for the actual lead magnets to make this as kind of, what do we say, as appealing as possible to brands in our target audience. So I might do a swipe file of winning image ads. And maybe we'll have to decrease the size of the font even more. Swipe file of winning video ads. A ad scripting masterclass or something. Spreadsheet of a hundred hooks that they could try for themselves. Something like a media buying cheat sheet. I could do something like a landing page swipe file. Something that might be good for them. Same kind of principle as the static image in the video ads. I could do list of 200 vetted UGC influencer creators. That might be a good one just to save them time. Scroll stopper. What could I do? I could do a, just because I don't want to say a swipe file for basically everything. We could do something like, you know, top five factors that get people to stop scrolling checklist or something. And I might actually do a swipe file there or I might do like some thumbnail templates or something like that. But we're just going to do that just for, for fun here. And I would do something like, you know, microphone, lighting, plus camera setup guide, if we want to call it a guide. Like these are some things because what, what are we doing with our lead magnets? If you watch a lot of my other videos or read my content, we're basically doing a few things with the lead magnets. The lead magnets are things that are going to, first of all, you know, give them a reason to put their email address and give us their email, but they're also going to do things like you know, overcome objections at scale, you know, prove that we know what we're talking about. If we have guides that are very good guides for all of these things, like that is extremely, extremely good for nurturing our target audience and, and proving to them that we know what we're talking about. We also want to solve every single one of the parts or problems or objections with Facebook ads for e-commerce because if we don't if there's there's a bunch of different parts and if we solve just one or two or three of these parts like the other objections the other doubts still exist in their minds so I'm stopping at nine lead magnets for this video but you might have even more than that if there are in fact more parts of e-commerce so this is important to know because this is also going to be our content strategy so what I want to do next is I know that I'm going to post content on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and LinkedIn. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put Twitter. I'm going to put Instagram. I'm going to put LinkedIn and I'm going to put YouTube. And I'm doing that because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to post all the content on Twitter and then use Hype Fury, which is this software here, just having it load. And if you see that when you post something on Hype Fury, you know, this is my example post. We can also cross post it to LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram as well. So basically what the situation there is, all of my content is gonna be made for Twitter and I'm just gonna cross post it just to save time. So that's an important step. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a, a tool like there, a Google Doc, not a tool. I'm not sure why I said that like this. And I'm going to take these different things and I'm gonna put them all in the tool as basically like this. These are the big categories and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So what I would, am going to do now is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to, three things, let's go. But, two things for, for, for sure, and then the third is a, a bonus, we'll call it. I'm gonna go to Quora, and I might put in static image ads, because this is kind of a good way to get you know a pulse on what people are asking, what people are thinking about. And the content strategy that I prefer is something where you just brainstorm your categories like we've done, and then 
you write down, you, you basically, the whole strategy is answering FAQs that have to do with each part. So if we correctly identify the parts and then we find 20 or 50 FAQs times nine lead magnets. So let's just say 30 FAQs times nine lead magnets. That's 270 content ideas. And after we work our way through, we can just restart from the top. We'll never have to think of a content idea ever again. It's very, very effective to just do this strategy where you are answering the questions that your target audience is already wondering and already thinking about. And it's just so easy for, especially for someone who's not a real professional content creator to do this instead of thinking of new ideas every day. So what I want to do now is go into chat GPT and I'll ask something like what are 50 advanced FAQs or objections or questions that have to do with creating great static image ads on Facebook. And then I'm going to say, don't give me basic surface level stuff. And then I'm going to put don't, because I've done this before, don't, you know, explain each question. Just give me a list. Because if you don't say that last part, it's going to give you an entire um, like, like explanation for each part. So the thing is, we want to probably brainstorm 50 or so like with this method because you know, not all of them are going to be great. And we can kind of take our 50, put it in here, and then we can kind of sort them out or delete ones that we think are not suitable for a brand that is between 1 to 5 million a year in revenue. But this is a great way to kind of think about it or brainstorm in mass. So the three ways you can do this are Quora, ChatGPT, and then your own brain. Like you, if you're an expert, you're running your service for quite a while, you probably know what the main questions are. So I have this thing here. You would do this for every single one, just for the sake of time, because I don't want this video to be like four hours. I'm just going to narrow down 20 or so for the static image ones, but it'd be the same process for the rest. Just... There's no value in me doing something over and over again. So let's continue generating just to get the 50 here. So let's copy and paste these in. ChatGPT has one of the worst copy and paste formats, so just keep that in mind. That We have to fix it up a little bit because that is a bit aggressive right there. And we might do something, we might do a checkbox because then like when we're, if we scheduled a post, we can just check it off here. So some of these are very good. Some of these are very basic, I would say. Some of these are just not really the, what we're looking for. Because this is kind of, in some ways, this is not, this is more like a FAQ how-to. I should have, when I do, have done this question, like done it based off of performance. Like, and I'm just winging this video, you have to keep in mind. The FAQs should be all about how to create great fit, static image ads for e-commerce brands for performance marketing purposes and how to lower your customer acquisition cost. So this is a good learning thing for the video. If you realized when, based on the results that you just, you basically, it's not really what you're looking for. You just do it again. And it's usually it's a case of you didn't do it specifically enough, if that makes sense. So, this is the, just the process you go. I'm going to move on in the video just because we can't be doing this for that long. It's just going to be a four hour video if I do that. But this is what the process I would take. I would, now that I've correctly identified all of my categories, you just do this one at a time. And that's basically that. So what I would do here for my strategy is I would do a few different posts and I want to post on Twitter quite a lot. So I want to do five, five times, we'll say three to five times single value tweets per day. 
And a value tweet would just be like something short, if you know what Twitter is. Just one tweet, something answering an FAQ is a great way to think about it. And just because I say answering FAQ, you wouldn't like say, how do I... How does copywriting play a role in this? You just answer the question however you want. It's not, you don't have to be very rigid about it. And then I would do three times long form threads per week. And I would have to, and then I would do three times images or graphics per week. And then I would do one times offer or promotional post per day because it's one thing to get a lot of attention for ourselves but we also have to <laughs> generate leads and so this offer or promotional post could be promoting some of the lead magnets it could be promoting our offer it could be saying book a call with me but the mix of this you can kind of think of these as top of funnel middle of funnel and bottom of funnel that's kind of the best way to think about it in my view so this is what I would do for my strategy for this. And like I said before, what I would do is just set it to cross post to Instagram as well as LinkedIn, just because that is just a lot more efficient than creating unique content for every single platform. So what I would do next is two, or two things. Because I plan in this case to make a YouTube video just like this one you're watching now every day for my Facebook ad agency and I would do one TikTok per day and I would also post that TikTok on YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels but what I would do is I would go into my Hype Fury I would go to my analytics and then I would sort my all my tweets because I'm going to be tweeting a lot more than I would be creating a TikTok and a YouTube because I probably do one of these per day maybe you know, three times per week, but let's go with one of them a day. What I do is I would sort all of my tweets by engagement or likes or link clicks or profile views or whatever you want. Let's just go with likes for the purpose of this video. And this is good because it kind of gives us, you know, what people are most interested in. And this is a very good way to find the ideas for our YouTube videos and our TikToks. So if I would probably take these ideas, let's just go the most winningest idea, you know, most tweets with most likes. Let's just say like this, we'll go down here. And we will go all the way up here. And that will be the basis for my TikToks. You know, if I'm posting three to five times per day on Twitter and posting one TikTok per day, you can kind of just a degree of choose the best tweets over time because that's going to be the best. For the YouTube, I would, what, here's what I would do for my YouTube. I would only focus on valuable content. I would not do any you know, top of funnel or research or anything like that on what people are doing. I wouldn't put crazy amount of effort into my editing, maybe no editing at all. I put some effort to my thumbnail and title just because that, like that's good for people finding it. But I would use these YouTube videos strictly as a tool to convert people who already know about me because that is the purpose of YouTube videos, in my opinion. It's just, the business niche is not a crazy amount of people, especially if you're talking about Facebook ads or something like that. So I would use my YouTube videos as a tool, like content down here. So let's fill that right in. Long form YouTube videos, very technical, kind of like the one you're watching right now, like the same idea something that would be very, very impressive to the e-commerce brand between one and five million. And what I would do for this is I would go to spreadsheets, sheets.new, if you don't know that hack, open up a new spreadsheet. What I would do is I would put video ideas, I would put a Miro board, I would put gamma doc, and I would put date. So the reason I would do this is 
as follows. I would, because there's only so many different ideas that you could possibly do for Facebook ads without, without sacrificing quality in the sense of making the topic more broad. So what I would do is I would brainstorm 30 different video ideas because I'll be posting one video per day. There's 30 days in a month. And by the time you get to day 31, people have forgotten. You could also put a different angle on it and you'd start over. So I'd do something like static image ads, video ads, hooks, the same thing as my lead magnets from earlier as a start. So let's just copy and paste those in there just because why not? I would also do, what else would I do? You know, design. I would do, gosh, I should really, I would have to do a lot more research on the different video ideas for this. But what I would do next is, if I was actually creating this agency, I would have, let's just say, 30 ideas. Let's drag that down just to emulate the fact that, you know, ideas, there we go. We obviously have to have the Montserrat font because that's the best one. And then I would create a new Miro board for every single one of these ideas. This is how I actually make the videos that you're watching, by the way. So static images. I would put anyone with the link can view and I would set up a Miro board for every single one of these things. And that would be my base of operations type thing. That would be how I make all the videos, how I lay out the topics, etc. So let's just make one because there's no need for me to do this 30 times for the video, but let's just do this and let's, let's just, I'd also do the same thing with a gamma doc. So I'd create a new gamma doc from blank and I'd go static image ads again. And I would do share anyone with the link. And this is kind of serving a few purposes because our gamma doc is kind of where we might put our presentation in for the YouTube videos. Our mirror board is what we can use to as a supplementary resource for the videos and to also, you know, make the graphics and stuff to help us convey what we're trying to convey. And then I would also so what I would do is today's March 9th, you know, March 9th, March 10th, March 11th, and hopefully this drags down properly. So basically these would be my video ideas for each day. And then on day, you know, 31, we just start over at the top and then we go down and the thing about this is it's an efficient way to do it and ensure that you don't get too far off track in terms of the topics. Because if you have to think of new topics, eventually you're going to get, have to force, it's going to force you to make videos that aren't like valuable to you, the target audience. They're just too off. They're just too far off. They're too broad. So instead of doing that, we can just make the same videos, but better or more specific or applied to a certain niche over and over. And the beauty of this is because once you hit day 31 and you start over, you already have the Miro board that's you know filled out for the first video and you can build on it and you can make it better. Same thing with the Gamma Duck and you just repeat this process over and over and that's what I would do for the long form YouTube. So let's start filling this out because I haven't quite done that. So static image ads. And look at it, it's just going to be too big. So we gotta take out the font and I'll try to zoom in. Video ads, what were some other ones? There were hooks. I'm going to put this on my other screen just so I can fill it out more efficiently. There was scripting. There were media buying. There was landing pages. There was UGC slash influencer. There were scroll stoppers and there was production value. So at this point, let's see what we really have here because we have our content ideas, basically. 
for what we're going to do on each of these platforms. That's all done. So I'm going to put a little check mark for each just so we can keep track of our progress. And then we also have our lead magnets brainstormed and completed. So in the context of this video, I don't know enough about the subject to make a lead magnet for each of these for this industry, but these are definitely the topics that I would do because I know what topics to do. And obviously if I was making these lead magnets, that this video would be monstrous in size. But what I am gonna do is show you the framework that I would do because the framework is valuable and it doesn't take a crazy amount of time. So what I would do is always, because we want it with our lead magnets, we want three things to be true. We want to follow this rule. We want it to be valuable. Even though the lead magnet is free, we still want to make it valuable and we want to put it through the $50 test. Even though this is free, would you pay $50 for it? And if the answer is no, it's just not good enough. Is there an exact plan, an actionable plan that they can implement within 24 hours to get some quick wins? And is it readable? Is there only one image or graphic and one idea per slide in our Gamma Doc? And that's why the Miro boards and getting good at this is so important. So static image ads. So what I did, if we recall, is this is gonna be a swipe file, but we still have to do it in a certain way. So part one is our introduction. And this is the framework that I always use because it's just very easy and very important. What, you know, what they should do. Part three, why they should do it. Part four, how they should do it. This is where the plan comes in. And then part five, examples. In this case, that would be the swipe file. But we don't, just because it's a swipe file doesn't mean we want to give them some, you know, just a Google folder of ads. Like that is not good enough. It's not valuable enough. We need to teach them what they have to do. So think of every lead magnet as a masterclass or a guide slash what they actually have to do. And then you'd have your slides in it like this. So this is what I would do. This is the framework I would use. And there, however many slides there are for each, that would be definitely be dependent on what the topic is. And then I would do something where you're promoting, promote your introductory offer here. And then that would be the end. You know, you'd have their book a call. You'd have all of that kind of stuff. The important thing that you want to do at the top is you want to have a video of yourself speaking. It's very important to have this so they remember you, remember your name, see what you look like, and know what you sound like. Because these three things equals a lot of trust being built. So as far as the frameworks, this is what I would use for all of them, to be honest. It's not exactly crazy. It's who, what, when, where, why, how formula, but you know, who, when, and where are kind of obvious. Who you, the person reading it, when, uh, presumably now, where, sitting at your desk. So but those are kind of obvious, but we still have to do the what, why, and how. So this is the lead magnet framework I would use, though. Very important. So we're kind of getting there, aren't we? So what should we do next? I think we should do whatever our cold email is. And the cold email is very important. I'm going to kind of just to, I'm just going to kind of do the cold email because we kind of do the same thing for DMs and prospecting. But the cold email will come down to three different things. We have the list, we have the offer, and we have the script. So if you're not into cold email, the number one, well, these are all important, but the number one factor in success in cold email, assuming you have the right list, is having a great offer. It's... Once you have a great offer, like it almost doesn't matter as much what you put in the script, but very, very important. So what I would do is I would go to Apollo and I would start building my list. So what I would do here is I'd have to, you'd have to use your brain quite good or quite, quite good. You have to use your brain here and this would apply specific knowledge. I have significant knowledge about exporting email lists and cold email for e-commerce, so I know this for a fact, but it's not necessarily that everyone does. 
So what I would do, I would set the location to the United States just because that's where most of the money is and they also have the least strict cold email laws. For technologies, I would do built with Shopify and Shopify Plus. This is what I would do for this case. What I would do here is, based on my previous knowledge of this subject, I know that this target audience will typically have because you can build a very large e-commerce store with just a few employees, assuming you use a third-party logistics center, a shipping center, and you don't manufacture. Like you could build a very big business with just three employees, a couple of co-founders maybe, a couple customer support people. So this is the number of employees that have a company email address. So I'm going to put this between three and ten. Because if they have more than ten employees and like probably have someone in-house or they're already successful to afford that many employees and below three, they're probably that's just too wide of range. It's people who inactive stores, it's people who, you know, have very limited revenue or no revenue. Like, so three people, if they have three people, I think we have a shot of exporting the right list. So the thing you want to do before you export any list is you want to go to, you want to open up, you know, for example, Apollo showing 25 people. We want to make sure that if we open up all of these people, that at least 20 out of the 25 or 80%, whatever, you know, if it's not 25, just say 80%, are actually good people in our target audience. And if they're not, we usually have to switch up our filters type thing. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. We also might narrow this down a bit more because this is kind of, to some degree, like we didn't really filter the job title and, you know, it might just not be perfect. So what we might want to do is not industry and keywords, but we want to go to job titles. We might want to narrow this down to the founder or co-founder or CMO, not Simon, CMO, director of marketing, whoever's going to actually make these decisions. Maybe a creative director, maybe not. I don't, I don't know if I put a creative director. But now that really, in my opinion, narrows it down a lot better as opposed to just anyone because that would be people that don't make marketing decisions, people who have a customer support. Like that's the reason they have a company email, just like non-related things, maybe developer, whatever. But if we have these things, we have our job title that has to do with marketing. We have the location of the United States, three to 10 employees, and using Shopify, it's a very good chance that this list is going to be a good one. We'd have to clean it after, we'd have to go through it, but that is all good. I don't like to use revenue because the formulas that these platforms like Apollo use to gather revenue are pretty inaccurate in my experience. What they do is they would take your average page views per month, they would apply an industry average conversion rate, apply an industry average average order value, and then say this is how much revenue you do. And that's not very accurate in my opinion and my experience. So let's put the list here and let's just re record all of these just for the sake of the video. So what do we have? USA, founder or marketing title. And let's make that text shorter again, or smaller, not shorter. We wanna do using Shopify or Shopify Plus, because that's who we're going to go after, and three to 10 employees. And this would give us a great list, in my opinion. So there we go. What we want to do is for our offer, the offer is going to be the main leverage point, most important thing slash leverage point. People get a ton of cold emails every single day, every single week, especially e-commerce brands, just because there's so many agencies and so many Facebook ad agencies specific for them that people just get a ton of cold emails. So this is not exactly a good thing for us. And it means we're going to have to stand out and have such a better offer that we really can't lose. It has to be that good. We can't just say book a call with us or... Do you want to talk? We have to give them something valuable ahead of time. 
And really what I would choose to do for them, assuming we have the labor, is I would say something like, I will make you five free image ads or something like that. And I would lead with this because to a large degree, like we can have Facebook ad templates if we are a Facebook ad agency that make this a lot faster. And surprise, I do have these templates. So we could say we'll make five templates for you, just give us some assets like images and you know what you want them to be about. And we could very quickly make these example image ads for them. And this will just make such a great, it'll be so much better than just saying, please get on a call with me or we do Facebook ads. And it'll make us stand out a lot more in the inbox and make us a lot more likely to reply. So for our script, 75 words or less is gonna be super important. No one's gonna read a book and a lot of people will just have paragraphs and paragraphs for their cold email. We want to incorporate social proof if we can. So I'll make you five free image ads. We did this for X, Y, and Z brand that hopefully they would know about. Don't include false flattery and personalization. That just annoys people. It doesn't actually make it better. You know, someone would be like, I love what you're doing with a thousand X leads. You know, by the way, I do video editing. It's stupid. What else do we need to do? We want to do two more things. We want to have a loom as the call to action. And we want to do this because we want to say like, Something like, hey, we will make you five free image ads. I've recorded a short loom going exactly the process we take. Mind if I send it over? And if they say yes, then you show the loom. So you want to embed the loom in email with thumbnail to show your face as opposed to just having it as a link in there because that's much more likely people will respond. So this is exactly what I would do for cold email. I would export this list. I would have my offer with five free image ads and I'd be able to make them efficiently using templates just to show my skills. And then I would follow these rules for the script and that's what I would do. So we're getting somewhere here. So basically I would have the cold email to the, I guess you could say five free static images offer and I, that would be my unique mechanism assuming that you know with a little technology that i could automate this which would be very very good so now we have cold email i'm gonna say cold dms is the exact same offer just for the sake of this video and i would say prospecting eventually is what you get to that offer as well so we're kind of getting somewhere aren't we we almost have all of our, we have our, all our lead magnets, our content, our outreach, and we just got to do partnerships. And then our top of funnel is complete. So for partnerships, we have our, of course, we have our referral. We have our white label, white label. We have our media and we have our joint ventures. So what could we do for each of these types of partnerships? That is the question, isn't it? Right away, I would be, so what I would do is I would be cold emailing these people to try to get the setup or to try to get conversations with people. I'd also be DMing them and prospecting them, but let's just say this. So I could partner with, you know, email agencies. I could partner with, you know, development agencies. Let's just put just put email there instead just because we they're obviously agencies we could have branding agencies we could have landing page agencies that would be a good one landing pages who else could we partner with here we could partner with SEO agencies all of these would serve e-commerce just to clarify that we could have let's say if, assuming we don't do Facebook ads a Google, or we don't do Google ads 
a Google Ads agency would be excellent, wouldn't it? Because if they don't do Facebook ads, their customers want it. That's an easy referral. So I'm just going to stop here for the f focus of this video. You could probably <laughs> think of quite a few. And what else, what, what I'm going to do, another one here, because it's just very important, attribution slash tracking apps, because those are the people who get a lot of inbound traffic that's, you know, your target audience, people who need Facebook ads a lot of the time. So that's just an important one to do there. So let's put cold email for all of these. But what would I do for my media partnership? So I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Yeah, let's not do cold email there. Let's just leave it like this because it doesn't look good. So I could do stuff like podcasts, e-commerce podcasts. I could do guest posts on e-commerce blogs. I could either guest post or sponsors someone's e-commerce newsletter. I could get on someone's YouTube channel. I could try to speak at someone's event. I could put on a, let's call it a, put on a special workshop for e-com communities. Like these are all options of media partnerships where we're trying to leverage the other person's audience to suit our own purposes. And if we can give something of value to them, give them exciting new content for their members in the case of a group or for people at their event in case of a speaking gig or their YouTube audience or their podcast audience or whatever, then that's very valuable to the type of people that we're trying to go after. They're getting interesting content for their audience. We are getting more exposure. And for joint ventures, I might do something like, you know, partner, partner with all other types of agencies. And I might do like something like a school that's, you know, you partner with school or course or something like that, where if, I know everything about Facebook ads. I partner with someone who knows everything about email, someone who knows everything about Google, someone who knows everything about SEO, email, web dev, branding, etc. And we make like an offer, like a school or an all-inclusive e-commerce course or something of that nature that will you know, cover all the bases. And this is what I do for partnerships. So let's keep going. Because we need our email flows we need our thank you page. Thank you page. We can kind of put the thank you page in there. So I'd have to choose like which one of the conversion mechanisms that I would want to be dominant type thing. Which one would I want to do the most of? Because we'd have an appointment setter. That's not really what we do it for. We'd probably choose either a, a paid product funnel a webinar funnel, a live workshop funnel, or a group funnel. And I think for this case, I would want to choose a paid product funnel as my, you know, so I have thank you page focusing on paid product. And I would do this for reasons that I will reveal before this video is over, but I do this because I don't really like any of the other options like crazy, you know, not saying they wouldn't, but these brands might, you know, not go in a community. There's a lot of e-commerce, Facebook ad newsletters, live workshops. Would one of these brands really want to sign up for that? And webinar, I don't really know off the top of my head how appealing that would be. But I think I have a great idea for a paid product. And it would be something like, you know, 100 editable ad templates for $100 or something. Because this would be impressive and appealing to all levels of the market from absolute beginners, gives us a way to monetize our unqualified traffic, all the way up to very successful stores. Like if the CEO or co-founder of a successful successful store saw this, you know they might just buy it, because why not? So let's go down here. And I would do this 
in the sense that they would be, you know, editable, editable in both Figma and Canva, just to make it easy for all the different options. And that is something that I would do right then and there. Very nice, very nice. We're getting somewhere now. For my affiliate stuff, I would do Facebook ad related softwares, of course. Something like, I don't know, I don't want to name actual softwares because there's lots of different ones, but something like a tracking or attribution software. That would be one, something that they all need. I would do, you know, an editing software maybe. I might do a landing page software because they need landing pages, right? I might do, let's take this kind of down and out of the way. Yeah, yeah, just like that, perfect. I might do a AI copywriting software. And I'm just gonna leave it at that because I hope that you get the idea of what I'm saying here. Just different softwares that Facebook ads and e-commerce brands need that would make sense to be an affiliate for. Let me just put this back up there because just the organization on this video is gonna be tricky. And make it all square. So I make my email flows promoting the paid product in addition to everything else. So what I would do in each of my flows here, every single email, let's just, you know, every single email would do a few different things. Let's just say promote paid product. Let's move this up a little bit. So it would promote the paid product. Let's make this a little smaller. It would answer one FAQ about Facebook ads. It would link to my content, you know, priority on YouTube to further nurture them. And it would give one actionable tip because You'll remember earlier that our FAQs are the basis of the content strategy. Actionable tips is one of the most important things for a lead magnet, and content is one of our most important conversion tools. So to show you that I actually do this, and let me open it on my other screen. Like this is what I use for a thousand X leads. Like this is the framework or the formula for all of this stuff if you are ever on my email list and opening this stuff because this is actually what is important. So for example, in my own emails here, you can see this is the actual tip. Make your first notepad ad creative. Here's my link to my YouTube. These are the six skills you need. And here is an FAQ. Is there a guarantee with a thousand X leads? Like So this is stuff that I actually do. So what I would do for this is I would do something like this. I would have my email flows. I would take three columns, for example, let's make them 300. I would put actionable tip YouTube slash content link and then an FAQ. Let's make this just stand out a little bit better. So what I would do is, you know, youtube.com, my link to all my YouTube videos however many, and I would just substitute all of them in. I'm just gonna put youtube.com because I don't have these videos. This is a hypothetical agency, right? I would take the FAQs or whatever, and I would probably narrow this down to the most important ones, not just general FAQs, but for the sake of this video, let's just put in the FAQs we generated earlier. If you have you know, 30 emails in this flow over the course of 30 days or something, You'd take your 30 most important FAQs that have to do with Facebook ads, but also you, and you would kind of do that. So, you know, maybe let's delete these. Why am I qualified for this? Why would you choose us as opposed to others? What results have we gotten from previous clients? 
And then the list just goes on. That's what I mean about the most important ones that have to do with not only Facebook, but you as well. And we can think of the actionable tips as very easy things to do that we can put in our emails that if they take them, they're going to get some quick wins. So let's think of these as a guide to quick wins. And I don't know much about Facebook ads anymore. I used to have a Facebook ad agency back in the day, but the industry has evolved quite some time and I don't want to embarrass myself on this video by saying something extremely stupid or obsolete. So this is what I would have for the email flows. I would probably have I'd probably have 30 emails in first 30 days. And if that scares you, it shouldn't. If they unsubscribe, they're never going to basically do that for you or they're never going to hire you anyway. So don't worry, worry about that. So 30 emails in first 30 days. And don't worry, I'm going to zoom in here. You know, affiliate links for Facebook ads was our affiliate offer because we're very we're really getting somewhere now like think of all that we have done so far I'm gonna delete this for now because it, we haven't done it and I don't know why I put it in there but our funnel is really getting somewhere now isn't it so now all we got to do is think of our newsletter and the newsletter is not gonna be crazy so it's going to be an e-commerce or a newsletter about anyway, Newsletter is meant to be over here. Newsletter about advertising. And that I wouldn't say that we want to make this specific to Facebook ads. I would prefer to make it about advertising in general because I think that is just a lot more important. So let's go over here. So newsletter about advertising. Let's just say about advertising. We don't need to say in general again. But the thing is, I would be sending this out minimum of three times per week because that is what's needed to get them to remember you, to trust you, to know you. Facebook ads are a very crowded niche and we need to put in the work and we're not going to win without putting in the work here. So three times per week newsletter about advertising. So let's just say that we have achieved this now. So what we'd want to do is for our live workshop here, once per week, or let's go, I would design image or video ads in real time in Figma or whatever. I think that would be a very excellent live workshop idea that would, for once per week, that would show off your skills in real time and make excellent recordings and training videos and proof to your clients that you know what you're doing. I think that'd just be an excellent opportunity. For a, I am OCD with this type of stuff. Sorry about that. So let's just format it like a normal person would instead of how I was doing that before. So an excellent way to think of a webinar is you know, either top five or top X things to achieve Y or top X things to avoid to achieve Y. So this webinar and its effectiveness will be all about the framing. Top five things e-commerce brands doing one to five million need to do to get to 10 to 20 million. We really have to due to the nature of what we're doing here, we're really going to have to call out our target audience hard for this. Or is they're going to just, because Facebook ads could mean many things to many different people. We really need to call out the audience very, very hard in this because Facebook ads could be for beginners or drop shippers or whatever. It's easy to assume these things. So if, if we don't call out the target audience very hard, the amount of people who sign up for the webinar will be very not great. And this webinar should be pre-recorded. We could also choose to frame it differently. You know, we could frame it as a case study frame if we want. So, you know, top five things we did with X, Y, and Z brand to help them go from one to five million to 10 to 20 million. As long as you're calling out your target audience, you have a few different options available. I might try both. And I might make two webinars here um, just to see what works the best because to 
a large degree, you don't know what's going to work the best without trying. So I'm just taking over the stuff from earlier because we kind of put it in the main spot before. But I would do long, unedited, super value focused video. Kind of like the one you're watching right now. And I would post these seven days per week. And that's just that. If you're wondering why, like that sounds like a lot of effort, it is. And that's just life. You could really make it a lot faster, more efficient with this spreadsheet though. And I would say try and set up system to make these with AI. If you can do this, you can do a lot more volume. It's going to be a lot better and that kind of stuff. So we're almost, we're getting there. So for the group, nothing crazy. Group for e-commerce owners over 1 million per year. If you're going to make a group though like this, you got to make people show proof to join because the effectiveness of this I believe if you have just beginners or people who don't even have e-commerce stores yet, it's going to very much kind of get ruined by the fact that there's people that are beginners there and they're just the actual people in our target audience are not going to be as engaged. So our appointment setter should follow up twice per week. One time, and this is why the other, you know, wants to schedule a call to try to schedule a call and wants to promote the other conversion mechanisms. So basically, let's say on Monday, our appointment setter was reaching out to try to get a call. And on Thursday, they're reaching out to try to get them to come to our live workshop or join our webinar or buy the Facebook ad templates or get the five free image ads or watch a YouTube video. If we have all of these other conversion mechanisms, we can reach out and have our appointment setter talk to them way more often. So appointment setter two times per week. Top five, top five things webinar. Live workshop designing ads in real time, I think would be great. And oh, we got to decrease the size a little bit and I'll zoom in just so we can see and we'd have a face or we'd have a group a vetted group let's go with vetted group for ecom owners over 1 mil per year so that is you know what we really want to be doing here so now we are very close to being finished kind of in a way because we have all of our partnerships so I'm just gonna put white label because we had them over there but there's just no room media and JV and if you remember that's like the white label is the other agencies that do other services but not Facebook ads the media or the the podcast and stuff so we're very much almost done this video should be another 10 minutes at most all the way down so far. So our paid ads, our outreach, our partnerships, our everything is getting somewhere. Now we just have to work on the, I'm just gonna put free video content. What I would do is make a video of all these lead magnets and post the video for free on the website. And if they want the actual lead magnet, then they have to sign up. So our recurring service is going to be Facebook ad management. That was kind of what I had in mind before the call was even started. So we want to refer to other agencies as that offer where if they are not qualified or they can't afford it, freelancer or cheaper agency and we'll collect a referral fee instead of just wasting those leads. So let's just put an arbitrary 7k per month for Facebook ad management. And that's as far as I know, in line with what you'd actually get these days. For our course, you know, we might have a top 10 things or we could have a, you know, video creative course or something like that. And then we could have a, you know, Facebook media buying program. 
and these could be cheaper. Like this could be, let's say 1K for $1,000. Let's go, f let's go Facebook ads coaching for 500 per month or something like that. Like these are examples of things that, you know, you need to, you know, let's go coaching and let's go creative course because the creative is most important. Like these are things that for people who are unqualified, you know, now we can sell them these Facebook ad templates. Now we're generating affiliate revenue through our lead magnets and our email flows. Now we have someone to refer them to if they can't afford us. Now we have a course offering if they can't afford us or they want to know to do it themselves. Now, if they can't afford us and they want to learn to do it themselves, we have a coaching offer where we can give them feedback and stuff in addition to our Facebook ad service. So the only thing that we have left is our one-time service. And what I would probably do is, you know, either an audit for $500, but that's kind of lame, I would say. I would do something maybe like a landing page for 2500 because they need a great landing page for their Facebook ads to work properly and you know do it yourself or white label slash outsource and that's a very good value proposition that's probably what I would do if I was this agency and if I didn't have the capabilities to kind of make this I would outsource it and just kind of eat the cost or not make a ton of profit, but just have that for the purpose of, you know, that's a very important part of Facebook ads. They're going to need a high performing landing page anyways. So you might as well do that, even if you're not going to make a lot of money. So the last thing we have to do is our pre-call flow. And our pre-call flow is important for a few reasons. I'm just going to bring it over here. The things we want to get in our pre-call flow so after they schedule a, a meeting or on your Calendly or whatever, I would send them at least three emails before, triggered maybe 24 hours before, four hours before, and one hour before. I would show examples of your work, show testimonials plus case studies of your work, And I would show show replays, videos of designing in real time in the live workshop because I think that would be such a great thing to do in terms of build trust. So now we have every single part of our funnel for a Facebook ad agency doing one to or targeting brands doing one to five million dollars per year, and that is that like this is how you would apply this to any business a thousand x leads funnel works for absolutely anything in b2b these are the things you would go through you'd think of your faqs you would think of your what else your youtube videos you would think of your lead magnet ideas you would think of your you'd export your list you'd do all of that kind of stuff and it's very easy it's very powerful and it can be done with absolutely any business. So I hope this video was valuable and I'll see you in the next one.